Hockey Nation fans, I've gone on a little bit early, probably, or maybe it's late. I can't tell. Maybe I'm late. Jeez, I don't know. But um, I have to run to the arena to scout for the Everett Silver Tips. So we're going to go through this insane streak by the Detroit Red Wings. Five game winning streak. And if you followed, you know, I was not like overly optimistic about how this was going to go. They had tough, tough schedule that saw them face up against the Oilers, the Flames, Vancouver, maybe not so tough. And the, Vancouver struggling with goaltending and, you know, two games. And then they went back and went to the Flames and Oilers and Flames again. And man, this has turned out crazy good for the Red Wings. <laughs> and since coming back from the All-Star break, Dylan Larkin is looking all world named second star of the week. We're going to blast through all this update quickly. What starts with Ali Mata signing a two-year extension. This is all good news. He's been very, very good as a number four defenseman. I feel like he's found a, a really good home with Philip Ronick, giving Ronick the ability to kind of do what he does offensively while Ali Mata is just solid as a number four on the left side. So this, I think, is really good news. He should be a good part of what looks like a pretty – Bright future suddenly for the Detroit Red Wings if Dylan Larkin can keep playing like this. But it's not just Larkin. They are getting great performances from Robbie Fabry. Perron continues to play well. Kubelik got on the board last night. But let's just start with this. Dylan Larkin, second star of the week. He has had 11 points in his last five games. Uh, did he get three assists last night? I believe he did. We will check that out. So that has been – that's great news for them. Somehow, Matthew Kachuk has still had a better streak than him. <laughs> was named first star of the week. But we'll take it. I mean, this is all – you know, not that Dylan Larkin was a bad player, but I was, like, very skeptical. Is this a number one centerman? But, I mean, I've never seen him have rack up points like this. I feel like he went to the all-star break. And he's come out realizing, hey, I'm one of not just one of the fastest players in the world, but I can play with these top players. And he's at a perfect age. He's a 96 or a 97 birth year. So this is this is all good news. <laughs> um, wow. I'm in shock. I don't know about you. So Red Wings played the Oilers the other night. This was on Wednesday night. And we know they lost pretty, you know, 5-2 where the Oilers turned it on the Jets in the second period and it was all Oilers after a 2-0 lead by the Red Wings in that prior game the prior week. Well, this time, it looked like this was going to happen again. The Red Wings were up 2 to nothing after the first and then it was 4-2 to two going into the third and then it suddenly was 4-4 four four, and they go into OT. But Dylan Larkin, the before mentioned, from Perron and Fabry, Great to see Fabry on the board. Great to see Perron on the board. And Larkin just continues to do great things since the All-Star break. Moritz Sider's been playing fantastic, especially since being separated from Ben Sherratt. Uh, I don't believe in this game that Wallman was back, but Wallman would be back in the Calgary game. This is 2-0, uh, good news as well. And the, the, look at the Larkin thing. It's a power play goal. Why that's important? Good morning, Adam. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Uh, this will be a relatively quick update. I have got to run to the rink very shortly. So I just want to let you know. But, um, you know, great week if you're a Detroit Red Wings fan. Lots of positive things happening, starting with, you know, this game just this week with Edmonton. So then it was 2 nothing after the first on Moritz Sider's goal. But, you know, I was mentioning the power play has really been looking really, really good. Now, Lucas Raymond is out, unfortunately. Um they call up Jakob Vrana, but he's not drawn into the lineup yet. So he is obviously practicing with the team, but not playing yet. They don't seem to need him. They're scoring goals. All right. So then Ryan Nugent Hopkins is really having a career year at this point. Gets his 25th. Robbie Fabry from Perron again, which is great news. I think this is this, is this, maybe it's not this game, but the next game he gets his 700 point. Philip Ronick, uh, his 28th assist of the year, but then, Ryan Nugent Hopkins is 26 goal. I think his peak is 28. So he seems <clears throat> pretty obvious that he's going to surpass that. He's over a point a game. So this, is, this should be his best year ever. But then, you know, uh, this guy McDavid got his 57th assist. I think he's up to 99 points. So he had 56 and 57. That puts him at 99 points. Lots of hockey to play for him. Will he get 140, 150? I kind of think so. Uh, Ali Mata who would sign a contract just after this, getting his fifth 
goal of the year from Larkin again. What the heck is going on, guys? But then, when Derek Ryan would make this a tie game, a power play goal from Dry Seidel, from Tyson Berry, and the before mentioned Ryan Nugent Hopkins, that puts him at 66 points in the year. So he's on pace for like a 90 point season almost. We'll see if he hits it. And then Derek Ryan gets his ninth. Clem Costin's a good story, by the way, for Edmonton. Coming over from St. Louis, if you look at his career points, I think he's got 14 goals in 81 career games. Maybe St. Louis wants that guy back. I don't know. <laughs> he's doing pretty well in Edmonton. So then it would go to shootout. Connor McDavid being the only goal for, yeah, I think Mata is a nice signing. I feel like I missed a game-winning goal here. McDavid and Perron scored, but then there was like, I thought there was a 10th attempt and that was the game winner. Let's just take a quick look here. I'm, I may may have cut something off. Uh, who scored the over? Was it, fat? Was it uh, Larkin again? No. Oh, that's the wrong game. So in the shootout, I'm missing something here. Perron scored, but someone else scored. Hmm. Oh, yeah, it was. Pia Suter. That's what I thought. It's really weird. They don't show Pia Suter on the score here. And I'm looking at the NHL site. It's not there as either. It's weird. But that's who would get the game-winning goal in the shootout. So Pia Suter getting the, you know, the goal that would make this the five, a 5-4 win for the Red Wings. Doesn't show up in his stats, but it is good news for him and good news for the Red Wings. And then they would come up against the Calgary Flames last night. They did not miss a beat. They put Magnus Helberg in as the second goalie. This seems to work out okay because they go into the third period up, and that's all you need against the Calgary Flames. They cannot come back. They lack scoring punch. They have not – I don't. I think they had a stat last night that they have not come back after losing – you know, trailing going into the third period by one nothing or more. I don't think they've done it all year. So that you know that that's just kind of diagnosed it. You know that you need a goal scorer in Calgary. Well, good thing they don't have it this night. Calgary, you know, pressed and there was some really sloppy, sloppy play in the third period by the Red Wings. But you know they would end the first period one one, but then the Red Wings blew it open in the second, which is strange to say. Lindholm scoring for Calgary, and then Kubalik who's kind of a little bit streaky, but he is the second leading scorer in Detroit. And it was a nice goal. That was a really good goal, right? What a play <laughs> if you watch the Bertuzzi goal from Fabry and Larkin. It was kind of like it went midpoint, and he just tapped it in the open side from – it was like a bank play almost. <laughs> you know, the goalie was out playing the angle and just kind of went boom, like on an L. It was pretty good. All right, so we had – um Lindholm and Kubelik made it 1-1 after the first. Robbie Fabry continues to play really well, getting his seventh of the year. Dylan Dubé would make it close again 2-2, but then Kubelik and Bertuzzi make it 4-2, and that would be all she wrote. The game-winning goal from Kubelik is 16th of the year. So he is now the second leading scorer in Detroit. I think he has 36 points in the year, which it doesn't sound amazing, but, I mean, again, a great signing. He's a little bit streaky, but played very well last night. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, and then Pia Suter would finish it off. <coughs> Philip Zedina getting his first assist of the year. We know he got his first goal the other night. So this is pretty good news if he can start contributing. This was basically their fourth line. But Pia Suter, we know, got the game-winning goal in the prior game and then getting his eighth of the year in regulation. And that would be all she wrote five games in a row. Who would have predicted this? It was not me because I thought that I was talking to Enertap on one of these broadcasts and I said, is he going to, are they going to be like four and eight at the end of this month? This looks like a tough month. Um, and it was a great goal by our friend Bertuzzi on that fourth goal. So you look now heading into the game on the weekend, Seattle Kraken were kind of on a bad streak there. I think they lost three in a row. They got a win in their last game, but the Detroit Red Wings, five in a row, seven, three, and oh, I don't think I would have ever guessed. I'm in utter shock and congratulations to them. A big part of it is how that power play is starting to click a little bit. Dylan Larkin, 11 points, second star of the week, six goals his last five games, five assists. 
And Ali Mata, who signed a two-year extension, he gets four plus four. I know people don't put much stock in that, but I think it's pretty good. And they got a win last night, only letting in two goals. I think they've had, during that time, if they scored five goals in each of their games, I think they have. Like, they they lost 5-2, but then since then, they've been racking up the goals. <laughs> they had a 6-1 win, right? They have a 6-2 win, a 5-4 win, and then a 5-2 win. Wow. And it's the first time, really, if we look at it, they've been totally healthy. The Wings are a nice little streak, yeah. But, you know, if you look at the standings here, <clears throat> so going into it, you got to think they'll go back to Billy Huso against Seattle on the weekend. I don't know if it'll be Martin Jones. Uh, you would think that it would be Jones, but I think Seattle, I don't know. The losing streak doesn't surprise me. I, I look at the scoring. The leading score has 38 points, which is Matty Beneers. Like, can you stay in the playoffs with that? I don't know about that. And they don't have wonderful goaltending. So, the, you know, the top six seems pretty locked in to me. Washington's on a bad streak suddenly, by the way. Three losses in a row. <laughs> Detroit, five wins in a row. Okay, so... You know, Washington has 57 games and Detroit's played 54. So they got three games in hand, 60 points to 62. Suddenly they're within striking distance of the wild card. Can they keep winning? That's the question. I mean, they got Ottawa twice at the end of the month. They have Seattle on the weekend. Now they have some, again, you know, Washington, who's not been playing great coming up. So this is a head to head like this could pull them even and they would still have a couple games in hand. So they got to get past Seattle first. If they can pull out a win there or at least get a point, that would be really helpful. The Rangers are just ripping it up. Tampa's a tough team, and they got two games against Ottawa who have been playing a lot better. So, man, you never know. They might be end the month on the wild card, like in a wild card spot. What the heck? I did not guess this would happen. Um, geez. Well, unfortunately, I have to, like I said, run to the rink. Ovi is crippling. Well, I think, you know, his pa his father, Mikhail, passed away, unfortunately. So that is very, very unfortunate. Um, I don't know how much of that really has to do with that. I'm sure Mikhail was, you know, known by a lot of the players. But you would hope that they would, in his honor, yeah, it's sad. I don't know, pick it up. But I guess we'll see. Is he off for this? I don't know if. Alexander Ovechkin, I would assume, is not playing at the moment. Yeah, he's still out. So I don't, I don't know when he is back. Um, yeah, they don't. He would leave the team for the foreseeable future, so that still has not been resolved. So not have he's still out. That's unfortunate. Um, that does not help Washington, but, you know, it might be interesting timing for the Red Wings, unfortunately, at their, you know, but don't count on anything. Tom Wilson's out. Ovechkin's out. So we'll see what happens. We got to get, we got to deal with Seattle Kraken first. So they got to come out of that with a point, probably to remain in contention. And then let's see what happens. Like they're going to face them head to head. And that's an opportunity to gain points again. Like, I'm not really convinced anything about Florida. Detroit has four games in hand on them, three games on the Islanders, and three games on the Cavs. Wow. I just I'm I'm still unsurprised and kudos to them. And if you know they're starting to get a little bit of production from Philip Zina, even if it is from the fourth line, only 12 minutes a game, that helps. And Kubelik, if he can keep chipping in, Perron keep chipping in. Fabry's playing real well. Stay healthy. That's the big thing with him always. He's had so many injuries. And Larkin just ripping it up. I, I mean, just Dylan Larkin, maybe you can be a franchise player. Get it in your head. Keep it in there. Um, the other news that I saw was um, really unfortunate. But um, longtime assistant NHL coach and Paul Gerard, he was with, um, I thought he was with, was he with Calgary? He's from Winnipeg originally. He was an assistant with uh, Colorado Avalanche from 2002 to 03, 2011 to 13 with the Dallas Stars and the Calgary Flames from 16 to 18. Uh, unfortunately, he passed away at 57. So our thoughts are with his family. That is very, very sad. 
He was very well liked and lots of tributes are pouring in from players. Um, he had a battle with cancer for a while, so that was very sad news. So just wanted to mention that. Um, there was one other thing. The NHL PA named Walsh its new executive director. So Martin Walsh was like a labor, I guess, you know, the, Donald Fair, who had held the position in 2010, uh, was replaced by Walsh, who is the new executive director of the NHL Player Association. He was the secretary of labor. <laughs> He was the mayor of Boston, the secretary of labor, and he spent 16 years on the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Okay. Uh, before getting into politics, he was a history as a union member and labor leader in Boston. So that is the replacement for Donald Fair for the NHL Player Association. Jeez, like, <laughs> that's an interesting pick. I mean, the guy's got a crazy resume if you're looking for a union leader. And that's what they want, the Player Association, right? They want someone that's going to battle on their behalf. Uh, interesting. I don't know much about him, but that's a wild resume. That's kind of interesting. So that that happens. That's You know, Donald Fair, I, th I don't know. Did he do a good job? It seemed like it. He was there for a long time. And the players, I think, have done pretty well. Also, I, meant, I noticed one other thing that I'll wrap up with. What the heck was it? I'm blanking out on what it was. You know, William Carrier for um, the Vegas Golden Knights has 14 goals in the year. I was kind of surprised to see that. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe that's what they want. I don't know. It's an interesting profile to select, but I guess that's what they want as a labor leader, right? So I'm like, oof. I mean, Donald Fair was at least in sports, like this guy was a mayor. He was a, in the sec, he was a secretary of state labor secretary. Like he's whew. hey, brand new. So guys, I have to apologize. I have to run to the ring. So I need to wrap this up, but I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Uh, go Red Wings. Go. Wow. Let's go Red Wings. Five game winning streak. Ollie Mata signs a two year contract. Oh, no worries. Um, so he signs a two-year contract extension. Dylan Larkin, second star of the week. Hopefully soon we get some news about Dylan Larkin's contract. Seems pretty obvious. 8.5 to 9 million given his contemporaries, Amika Zabanajad and Bo Horvat. If Bo Horvat got 8.5, why wouldn't you give Dylan Larkin 8.7 to 9 and then wrap this thing up for eight years and away you go and let's focus. Apparently getting good news from the prog progress of Simon Evanson, by the way, in the AHL. But uh, yeah. Not ready for the NHL. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we will see you on Hockey Nation Live tonight with Coach Frenchie.